guys were live. Welcome, Cody. Welcome, Kent. Howdy, Thanks. howdy. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Mate, all good. Thanks, Ken, for joining us, mate. I know it's a bit difficult for you. Me and Cody usually join up every now and again. We're we're free and uh, free and footloose, but you are you know you're sort of a bit constrained on time, mate. So thank you again for taking the time out to come and join us and talk all about the D bad rule system. Hey, hey. my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> you seem really enthusiastic about it, but yeah, anybody... oh, it's, it's, it's what it is. <laughs> but we're, yeah, primarily talking about second edition forty k. Uh, for the purposes of people who are just sort of peering through those, you know, through the curtains of the windows thinking, oh, that looks pretty good. That looks quite exciting. Something back in the past they never got to play or maybe they did play it back in the day like all of us and then have returned after many years later out of second edition and coming back into it for the first time or what our impressions are. But I think most people are, are familiar with Cody uh, and his uh, GM Cody channel and that kind of thing, but maybe Kent... You've been on the podcast a couple of times, mate, but just briefly, what's your history in 40K second edition, buddy? Uh, I started in Rogue Trader, did that for a bit, but then when second ed came in, I was working at Games Workshop. Yep. And as you know, working at Games Workshop, running, what was it, 10 to 20 demo games a day minimum. <laughs> you get a really good understanding of uh, second edition. From that, uh, we played a lot in store. We played a lot with our mates and... Um, I never got to play competitively, only against other Games Workshop guys and also the guys that came into the stores late at night because you weren't allowed to play proper games in the stores in those days. Uh, so I played a lot, a lot of second ed 40K, broke the rules completely and utterly. You, could, you can't even imagine how dirty and filthy we played it back in those days. And from that time, you know, once you've pushed a system to the limit, you start going, okay, so this book's broken, this is broken, this is broken, whatever. I actually want to go back to what I like doing, which is strategic wargaming, and that's where D-Bag came about. Right. Okay, mate. Now, tell us about their army, because I, I think I know what your favourite favorite army is, but what, what's your favourite army, mate, you like to play? <laughs> uh, in second, Ed, like, so I, <clears throat> I haven't told you this, Ooh. but I'm off Space Wolves. Me and Space what? Wolves are done. What? <laughs> you can take the uh you can take the latest you can take the latest heresy series for this because i think russ was wrong he uh catted it at the end he should have taken out horace when he had the chance but he didn't he should have taken out magnus when he should have but he didn't oh. my lord and then i'm just off them like because if, if russ stayed on terror it would have been a different story but he oh. chose not to and then he didn't do what he set out to do off the walls completely off um <laughs> having said that in second ed so for the last three tournaments so the first one i ran was my space walls which i love then i ran uh my imperial guard and then i ran gene steel occult and out of the three i actually prefer running gene steel occult more than anything else okay. didn't have many rules but you just that little combination and just a bit of free wheeling and under the d-bad system you could come up with some really Really cool combos at a low level. And Gene Steel is really punch hard. So I've always liked that sort of uh, narrative. And, you know, you get to have the cool limousines and all that sort of thing with uh, Gene Steel Occult. Yep, absolutely. I got to taste what that was like when I painted up Carnifex <laughs> the Occult Army. I actually got to put it on the table for the very first time. But I've always been, I've always liked the Gene Steel Occult theme. The Majors, the Patriarch, the Gene Stealers. Yeah, the, it was so cool. Yeah. So, so cool. Fun. Than the other right the, the the mainstream gene stills i think the the cult just seemed just much cooler than the the mainstream ones but uh, that's cool mate okay cody mate your your history in second edition mate briefly yeah well we talked about it the last yeah. couple live streams and stuff that was the first game that got me into gaming as a whole um so i got into it around 95 96 when i was a kid um so back then when we played it all we really had was the contents in this box sitting beside me and we might have had a few extra stuff you know i mean um and back then i played the orc set of this box set and i had i think when gorka morka came out i combined that stuff with what was in there and that was my army back then uh back then i think i was the only one out of you know it was really just you know the neighborhood kids uh, you know, the friend down the road, maybe in like 
my cousin because my cousin actually had the rules in the box set and that's what we played out of. Um, but the only one that understood the rules was me. Uh, and I'm not even really sure I understood all the rules, but I did understand how to play the game. So I was teaching everybody else, but every, we're all, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old. And it, they, they didn't quite you win every it. game, Cody. What's that? Did you win every game? I, I have no idea. I, I don't know if I, <laughs> I have no idea. But th there are some funny stories about that because I would pull out rules that the other people didn't know. Like yeah. I remember specifically playing against my cousin and we were playing, uh, we were playing this scenario, which I don't remember. I think I got it out of a white dwarf or something. And it, you were trying to hold and take a bridge or maybe we just made it up. And so we set up like a river and we had this little bridge we made out of cardboard or whatever. And uh, so I, I get over the, he gets his space Marines over the bridge and I'm like, well, I'm going to start chucking grenades at your Marines. He's like, you can throw grenades. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, it's like right here on this, you know, this page or whatever. He's just like, no way. And he just didn't believe me. And I had to like show him the rule. I was like, yeah, right here. You can throw grenades and all this stuff. So yeah, it, it kind of went like that, but we really, I mean, really, we were just kind of like pushing models around on the floor. You know, when I was a kid, we were just having a good time. And uh, it wasn't until I got a little bit older that we actually, and it wasn't too much longer. Like when I got in middle school, we had a proper war games table and terrain and stuff, but third edition had come out by that time. And I had left, uh, and we just kind of left second edition in the dust because I mean, we didn't know the difference. We were just moving on to whatever the newest thing was. Uh, so I, I played 40 K off and on until I was probably about, uh, 17 or 18 and just completely got out of it. And the reason I got out of it it's mainly because of the 40K fans. I hate to say it, but um, it was not really what I was looking for in wargaming. Like, it was just over over competitive. The, the, the scene around here locally was not real nice or friendly. People, I, they, it just wasn't a very good environment. Even though I loved playing the game, I loved the universe, I loved the models. I just didn't have fun playing with the people that were playing it at the time. So I just got out of wargaming completely until... Uh, about probably 2010 and i got back into it after i got out of trade school and i was like i really want to get back into wargaming and warhammer actually wasn't my first choice to get back into it i, I started looking at other games i was playing historical games and just some other stuff i wanted to play everything else but warhammer because i had all these bad experiences playing warhammer <laughs> Uh, but eventually I got dragged back into it and I actually found a good group of guys to play with, but I didn't like the modern iteration of the rules. I didn't like the models. Uh, I had fun playing just for the spirit of playing. And I, I liked the people that were playing, but I didn't really, I was like, I don't really like these rules. I don't really like the models. I don't like the style, the aesthetic. And I started playing with my childhood friend that got me back into it. And he was like, why don't we just play the, the game we played when we were kids? That was way more interesting. Remember all that crazy shit that happened, like vortex grenades and vehicles going out of control and stuff? I was like, yeah, let's do that. So we started getting back into second edition 40K, and that was around uh, probably 2012, you know, just mm -hmm. a couple of years after I got back into wargaming. And ever since then, I've, um, you know, I, I've been playing second edition 40K and, old, you know, amongst other things. But second edition 40K is definitely my favorite miniatures game without a doubt like it, without hesitation i would say that awesome man that's great um so yeah i think we've all sort of I, for me too i played it back in 95 when i came back from uh, 96 when i came back from the uk uh really started playing because i didn't play it before then so played it with marcus and a few other guys that i knew through the club the local club there as well um but yeah didn't have a great extensive you know, history or knowledge of the game, to be honest. So it wasn't until that I met Paul and, you know, we thought we could get him back in the second edition 40K. I bought the box set of Brad on Made in Australia and some books and stuff like that. Uh, got the Orc Army, classic road trade Orc Army from um, my good friend David in the States in a, in a paint trade deal. And that sort of set the basis for us, you know, playing again. And yeah, it's been interesting coming back because there is a certain hidden gem about second edition 40K, which is very quite unique. It's obviously the, it's, you know, Road Trader was like the Genesis and then second edition became more of this full fleshed, fully encased kind of beast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it took a lot of things, a lot of DNA from Road Trader, but they were sort of refined it and 
gave this beautiful colored gloss over with the cards and you know all that kind of stuff yeah so for, for guys who like for us who have come from you know playing the 90s and playing now do you still hold it as to be as one of the greatest games they've made or you're still one of your favorite games you play in terms of second like as in terms of any edition you've played a 40k uh ken what do you reckon mate it's a gamer's game it's a game for people who really appreciate the time and effort for wargaming so even the guys when they created second edition there was such a uh an involvement from rogue trader where they had to get con they had to get commercial about it they had to make something into it but then they were able to take a lot of what rogue trader was the feeling the flavor of rogue trader that small skirmish game and put it into this game which made it awesome the invention of army books hadn't really been done until then that was a you know revelation in itself um you've got it just the game itself works so well until it gets too big yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until until you hit like 2000 3000 5000 points the game just breaks down into an absolute mess and that's mm. where third edition comes into play where you could put more models like if you listen to any of the stuff from the guys who created second edition they all said yeah the game worked really well small never mm. worked well big and as soon as the games workshop started producing more models they had to come up with other ways to actually design the game because the game wasn't ever designed for the model range that games workshop eventually had but for me if you want to have a small fun skirmish game that's got all the flavor second is where it's at all right pure gaming cool okay i think so too now we've got sci-fi uh, who's joined us now? I know he's in the UK. So, Sci-Fi, you're awake at this time of morning, mate. This is like, I don't know what time it is over there, but bloody hell, it's late. It's like early morning over there. So, thanks, mate, for joining us. <laughs> and props to him. Yeah, and Banjo Destructo. This means you, Richard. I don't know if that means Richard from uh, from Bring and Battle, Richard. I'm not sure. So, I, I think he's referring. Don't be a dick. So, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe gives a bit more context there about who, which Richard you're talking about. But yeah, guys, look, um, look, yeah, I think we can all agree that yeah, second edition holds a special place in our hearts from from the '90s, and of course, we, you know, that nostalgia grab is is quite strong for us. The models, I think, would be the biggest thing for me. Yeah, like I love my I love my Kev Adams second edition uh, and Rogue Trader Orcs and the Jez Goodman Eldar, and you know, you could you could string off a number of different armies, a number of different models that really and capture what it, what it was like to play second edition um so guys do you have any particular favorites of yours that you have either painted back in the day that you got recently and recently acquired and started painting ken what about you mate uh i went through and repainted all my so my first box set for road trader was the rbt 01 uh space marine box where i painted space walls because they were gray and gray was really easy to paint um, this is before they became Nordic Viking space warriors. So, you know, there is that. Um, last thing I painted for Road Trader, I actually, um, yeah, I got a 3D print of a Chuck Dreadnought and I uh, painted it up for my Night Lord's Heresy Army, would you believe? Right. Just to annoy people. <laughs> <laughs> All these young kids that come into Heresy and like, and uh, yeah, they think they're old school because they're playing heresy. I go, I'm older than you, mate. I'm so much <laughs> older than you. <laughs> Have this chuck. This chuck is predate heresy. Um, yeah. But I still love doing that sort of stuff. Um, I painted up some Eldar not long ago just to test my um, painting skills. If I that actually come along any sort of. Because you know when you painted when you're younger compared to what you paint now, and the style and the techniques that you have are so much different than what we used to use. Like, um, I went like you, Josh, because you're a really good painter. I was shit. I was terrible. And it's just taken me years and years and years of actually working on it. So it's nice to repaint some old models and, you know, go, oh, get a bit of a jolly out of that. I don't yeah. do Goblin Green bases, but what are you guys' feelings on Goblin Green bases? Mate, it's an absolute must. How dare you not do that again? How dare you? But like even back in the nineties, even back in the nineties, and people probably don't know this about me, I never based anything on Goblin Green bases. Yeah. Ah, All right. My second edition was based on black rim bases with like cat litter, you know, that shit cat litter we used yeah. to Yeah. We used to pour that on that. It was it on I never actually, never actually painted. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, only now that I'm I'm sort of doing goblin green basing now. But uh, how about you, Cody? It's not a it's not a must for me, but if I'm doing a second edition or rogue trader specific army, I'm going goblin green bases. Yeah. I, I like I, I actually do like I I appreciate the aesthetic of it, and I think it really makes like especially if you're doing like brightly colored, you know, um, very vibrant models. They they really it really makes them pop, you know, on the tabletop. But it's not a must for me. I mean, I do other types of basing. Um, but if I'm painting an army from that specific period, or you know, even a Warhammer Fantasy army, uh, I like I like the Goblin Green for sure. I definitely usually go that route. Yep, that's I can't do it from from Games Workshop days. And we had our painting tax. I mean, you remember the painting tax? And everything, every model I ever painted for two and a half, three years had a Goblin Green base. I was like, no, I'm fucking done, done, <laughs> done with Goblin Green. I get it. I get the aesthetic. I get what you're trying yeah. to put down. Yeah. Um, but my space walls, my when I repainted all my space walls, they're on like a nice icy snow base because it pops better with the gray. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got. I do have some old armies from back in those days. My mate who I used to work with, he actually gave me all his armies. They're all on beautiful goblin green bases. I appreciate it. I get yeah. it. But we have battle mats now. We have cool stuff now. We don't play on goblin green tables that were painted in the shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Just chipboard painted green, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah nobody's nobody's rolling out a goblin green mat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I'll be honest with you. I still kind of I, I appreciate the modern aesthetic as much as I appreciate the 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 new aesthetic. So uh, occasionally, I like going down nostalgia lane and just rolling out like a green cloth and laying out some oh, yeah. old school like terrain and playing that way. But I have you know like yeah, I've got tons of really nice battle mats and tons of. 3d printed terrain and stuff and you know I, i'll go both ways i appreciate all aspects of that so um i could see both sides of the coin on it and i, I like both of them you know i think one of the one of the matte manufacturers need to come out with goblin green just flat goblin green no texture just goblin green just yeah. roll that sucker out because at least I'd then be i get the aesthetic of, <laughs> yeah yeah you'd be all over it it's like at least I get the feeling of a nice mat underneath my miniatures. And like these are old lead miniatures. When they fall over, they don't smash into a thousand pieces. This would be a good thing. Right. There you go, mat makers, if you're listening. Goblin green mat. All us second ed players will buy one. Well, let, let, let me enlighten you, oh creator of D Bad. You can take oh, like, yeah. you can take a photo of my table, right? Like I've got I've yeah. it's all flocked, yeah. It was all flocked. It's flocked table. I take a photo of that. I send it to I think frontline gaming. Yep. Right. They take that image, they superimpose it onto the mat. They they basically screen print that image onto the mat. So nice. you can, I could have what I have here on a, on an actual you know mouse mat thing. Now, nice. Oh, so we can have the goblin green one side and then we can have the necromunda gray on the other side. <laughs> yeah, 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 they'll make it. But you know, I, like when we when we played them back in the day, we never had a goblin green flocked board. No, we never had them in the shops. Never. It's a chipboard painted goblin green. Yeah, 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 that's right. And we yeah. played on the floor. And if we you're, always played on the floor. You know, and if you're really on. fancy, you got the train railway grass mat and you rolled that out and you, yeah. you glued that to your table. Yeah. I still yeah. got mine from from 1995. My mate gave me my, his table, a three-part uh, chipboard table that's got a um, railway glass on it with every nice. stain known to man on it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so inquire any further on that one but yeah okay but yeah but yeah like mats are great i i can't i can't ignore the fact that it's nice to you know you can so smooth and silky smooth you can push i can push my little un, unmoved trade regiments across the table nice and easily it's yeah. nice feeling of the dice rolling on them and that kind of thing so yeah i'm, I'm totally not opposed to the new the new technology out there with making mats i think it's bloody amazing you know i use them myself but yeah, in terms of like old school gaming, you got to you got to do the old school way. I think that's my philosophy. <laughs> I did Nigel Stillman coming through me. I think maybe yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sci-Fi says, "How could I miss this?" Well, I'm really glad to see you here, mate. I'm really glad you can come on. And uh, I don't know what time it is over there, but yeah, please get some sleep. But hey, it's Friday, isn't it? Friday over there for you guys, so you should be all right. He probably hasn't gone to bed yet. Nah, probably not. <laughs> Astro Zombie, thanks, mate, for coming on. Uh, group of guys right here, Greens from Texas. Yeah, he's a good buddy of mine. What's oh, up, cool. Nice. Awesome. And Goblin Green all the way. There you go. Testament. Goblin Green all the way. Look, it's, it's a divider. It's something that, you know, people... Sorry, I had to go. <clears throat> um, 
it's it divides the community sometimes. It definitely divides the Facebook group. If you post a miniature on a Facebook group without a Goblin Green base, you get the purists coming out going, you can't do that. Like, no, just get over it. I will paint my little men the way I want to paint them. Mate, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how to do what you want to do, mate. You just do whatever you exactly. want. Exactly. Do whatever like, you want to make you happy, mate. It's like when you take a second head miniature that are normally bright, colourful. Um, yeah. And, you know, I do appreciate the aesthetic of a crisp paint job. But I also, my preferred painting style is grim dark. Yeah. So I really like grim dark marines. I like grim dark. More my chaos is bright, but it's kind of gritty at the same time. So what you got to do? Just get them painted. Like yeah. we're all older now. There is no yeah. excuse to have a second head army that's not painted. You've heard it there, don't right? Don't come there. rolling up. So don't come if, rolling up to me wanting a game of second ed and pulling out grey. <laughs> <laughs> the fear of you on this. Not on. Yeah, yeah. Not no. on. <laughs> yeah, we we I think Cody's the same. We don't play unpainted stuff. You know, everything no. has to be painted. Yeah. All the terrain has to be made and, and painted. And yeah. I have an eighty percent rule, to be honest. I actually have an eighty percent rule. You can have eighty percent of your army has to be painted, and that twenty percent can either be partially or it might be something you're trying out. I get it. That's fine. But the game's about immersion. Be immersed. That's Don't it. Rock up and cry. That's it. Otherwise, play tabletop tactics or the tabletop, what is it called? Tabletop simulator. You've got everything done. Yeah. Everything's painted. Everything's done. Everything's, you know, all there. Um, but How yeah. do you guys feel about tabletop simulator for second ed? I like it. I think it's fine. I, I do it a lot because I have good friends of mine that live thousands of miles away. Yeah. Um, and you know we can't play i don't have like i would do remote gaming i don't have room here to set up a four by six table and you know uh remote do that like i live in a one bedroom apartment it's just not going to happen uh, my wife would be quite furious if i set up a war game table <laughs> so uh <laughs> but maybe maybe i should do it anyways uh do it on the bed well, mate do it on the bed yeah yeah totally like, i just do it on the floor on the like we did when we were kids yeah. uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't have a problem with tabletop simulator at, at all. I use it quite often to play games. I think it's it's not the best way. Like I'd much prefer to go over to my friend's house and have a beer and take our time and have all the nice terrain and miniatures. I mean that, like you were saying, Kent, I think that's an important part of gaming. Period, miniature gaming especially is the the aesthetics of it all laid out, all painted. And you're sitting there and Beautiful. get to it's yeah. I mean that that really is what. That's like half the fun, right? If yeah. if if your army yeah. are laid out right and with all the good terrain, like it's just it's not you're 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 missing out, you know. The game yeah. is only half the fun. Or really, I'd say like a third. Like a third of it is hanging out with good friends, having a good time. The other third is like having these beautiful painted armies with terrain, and then the other third is the actual game, you know. So yeah, for for but for me, like just to play a game and you know. If, and if you know me and my buddy want to have a game, like, and he lives two thousand miles away, uh, tabletop simulator is a decent choice. I think it's really the only. I think there could be a better software made. I don't think it's perfect. It has a lot of problems, um, but for me, it, it works fine for for what it is. You know, like, and it it's still the best thing that I've found digitally, uh, where we can actually play games like that, and it works works fine. And that's that's a decent pint glass you got there, Cody. Yeah, yeah. That's a British pint glass. Good on you, mate. Nice one. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think that's part, that's the reason why we've gone down this rabbit hole. You know what I mean? Collected all these armies, spent all that time painting it. You, you have the satisfaction with your the person you're playing with. They reciprocate. They paint their armies, and you have a beautiful-looking display because it's the spectacle, isn't it, at the end of the day? Uh, that's what you really get to enjoy, the achievements of doing all that work. So Sci-Fi says it's like 3.30 a.m., but Friday night, is so it's all good. Nice one. Okay, Astro Zombie says... He hasn't gone to bed yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just like mine all goblin green. Fair enough, mate. Uh, our group is a house rule unpainted as in minus one armor save. We painted stuff as quick as we could. <laughs> yeah. We should be like goblin or something. That's, uh, that's a good, good rule. I like it. Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, also, when you have fully painted armies, you get even better dice rolls. At least convince your opponent that happens. Yeah, well, well, that's cool. not for the first time you field it. Whenever you f freshly paint an army or a model or a unit and you put it on the field, it <laughs> dies in the first shot. Yeah, that's really sad. <laughs> 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 and 
and they're every time. Look. Sawsome, sawsome. That's a new one. I like that one. Sawsome. Um, you know, you know where it really picked up that culture from, though, because for the longest time, I didn't. I, I, I always painted, always painted models, but I never got anything done. But I really picked up that culture of getting everything painted and done from the historical guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they get like, immersion. Like, they understand immersion. Like, exactly. They and they so much lengths for their tables and everything. Yeah. And those guys, you know, I when I got back into gaming, I, um, I found a historical club here. And those guys are all older guys. And... You know, it's it's a proper like old school war games club. You know, they have a spot they play. Somebody somebody brings all the stuff, sets up the game, referees the game, and runs it for everybody else. And there's usually like two or three games being ran every every week, right? Like they they meet on Tuesday nights and they do that every week. Um, but when I started going to them, I really that's when it really clicked with me that you know these guys know how to do it, and this is so much more fun when when you know, all the, all the miniatures are painted and everything else. So I'll give props to the historical guys. Cause they really, they were the ones that properly taught me how to, how to war game. You know, <laughs> it, it definitely was pretty good drinkers game. as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. I, I, They're good drinkers. Holy yeah. shit. Man. They, they drink like fish. But well, I find that the uh, historical war gaming is where war gamers go to die. Cause once you play with historical <laughs> for a long period of time, you're fucked. It's all over. <laughs> Sell your forty k, sell everything. <laughs> once you've gone down that rabbit hole, you're gone. Because what are you going to do? Just argue over Napoleonic rules for the next four years? Yeah, you will. Because you'll change them like underpants. No, <laughs> I, I, I've had the opposite experience. Actually, a lot of the like the lot of the guys. <laughs> obviously, I play historical games, and I still play forty k. Um, a lot the of the oldest forty k you could find. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, a lot of the guys, historical guys I play with, they're they actually are really set on they found their game, right? Oh. Yeah. Uh they're they're they don't hop around to games. Like, you know, there's one guy in the club, he does World War II and they play command decision. That's what they play. You yeah. know, they have like That's all you know, do. Yeah, and they yeah. play we play Civil War, we play volley and bayonet. That's what we play. You know, like <laughs> so, so it's like a club, it's become like a club thing where like they have like set rules for different time periods. Now, if somebody brings in a different game all cool you know like you you brought the game we'll play it but there there is these like standard games we play and i really appreciate that um so yeah i mean i kind of of course that's completely anecdotal it, it's going to be different from everybody's you know i'm local. just going from my experience everyone in my mind yeah, yeah. went to the historical path has never come back yeah <laughs> But anyways, we're we're talking about second edition now. Yeah, 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 that's all right. We're just sidetracking for a bit. That's all right. The words of fury in his uh, compound there underground in some hidden base. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, spreading out. I have a lot of time in my head. I get a lot of thoughts in my head. This is where it comes out. Right, that's it. That's what we've got on you, mate. That's why we want your perspective, mate. Okay, so now talking about second edition. Now, if someone's you know, listening to this and they're kind of curious about second edition, about, you know, what is this game? I never got to experience it. I started a third edition or later editions and I want to go back and try out what this game was like. Um, now, where would they go? And I would recommend, and I think you guys might agree here, would be if, if, they're, a, if they're a member of Facebook, go to the 40K, 140K second edition Facebook group where you can find the file section and you can a- a- attain a lot of assets through there. I'm just going to try to share my screen here, guys, and I'm going to just try to see if we can share that particular screen with our viewers. You can probably see it now, hopefully. That's the one. It's the one. Okay, so it's got 8.6 mem- 8.6 thousand members, which is quite a, quite a pretty decent number of people actively playing second edition, or at least interested in this particular edition of of uh, second edition. Um, so as expression to Cody before as well, it's a great way to find other people and maybe located in your area that you could hook up with and play games with, or at least go to a club or some kind of, uh, area or event where you could see it being played and maybe participate in something as most of the guys are very open and welcome about getting new people and new blood into the game. So if you are a member of Facebook and you do find this group, which I highly recommend you go visit. Uh, you've got this file section. When you click on here, it's got a load of stuff in here. 
and I'm pretty sure you'll find the actual rule books and stuff like that here. If not here, then you can find it somewhere as a PDF online that you can ha happily download and read through at your leisure. But there's just a ton of information that was released, of course, with White Dwarf magazine that came out through the 90s uh, for various different uh, vehicles with their down effects cards because second edition was the time in the 90s where cards were a thing uh, for psychic powers, for war gear, and of course all the data effects cards for the vehicles. So you'll find a lot of stuff here, either, either user created or official content that was released during the 90s. You've got a wealth of information that you can go in through and source from here. Uh, guys, any other comments about uh, this particular Facebook group that you want to mention at all? I think, yeah, I, I mean, that that's the place to always direct people. I think it pretty much has all the resources you need to get started. And I'm pretty sure we're going to bring it up next. But the, the first place I would recommend starting is actually the, the Battle Bible, which right. you can find you can find on the Facebook group there. Um, and that's probably the first place I would start. Uh, I don't think it's... Yeah, the, definitely. I think the Battle Bible itself, because it has all the White Dwarf, all the erratas, everything built into the one spot. Mm -hmm. It means that you're not flicking between things. You don't get a lot of mixed messages about things. Yeah. And as a general rule for, you know, when I play second ed 40 K, I always say we're playing by battle Bible. It's just yeah. a lot easier to, it's has every codex in there, has every book in there. It's all up to date as much as it could be. And, you know, if this is what was used in tournaments, uh, in the last of the second ed 40k tournaments yeah. so the last one that was ever held in australia was actually run by this you know what i mean so and also the ones of the uk were run by this so if you want the most up-to-date rules as as an old system can get this is the place to be okay then well, go out hunting then go hunting for you know old cards and dark millennium boxes and stuff like that if you want to get the nuance and the feeling of it all the cards and stuff but you can actually play the whole game just from this Awesome. Okay, so there, yeah, as like Kent was saying there, it's got everything within a 275-page document here as a PDF. Um, so any of the any of the rules, any of the army book codexes that you needed, it's everything's contained in one particular file. So um, that's a really important resource for anybody who's either an active player or anybody who wants to jump in and try having a look and not having to spend any money initially. You can find it here on the battle book. So I've I've left a link uh, in the description here. That's for uh, the Newcastle Legions website, which is uh, has a link in there as well. But you can find this online. Uh, you you just just type in there second edition one forty k battle bible. It will come up in some iteration that you can download for yourself and have a look. So so thanks guys for sharing that information for people out there who might be quite kind of curious about it. Uh, now, also, Sci-Fi just mentioned here, are uh, there any journal articles there too? Man, there were massive amounts of journal articles. For yeah, yeah the Battle Bible is the most up-to-date resource there is. So pretty much any FAQ that you've got in there will be in there that was worth knowing. With the journal stuff, the journal stuff, some of the stuff just wasn't <laughs> playable or usable. Yeah. If it was yeah. playable and usable, it'd be in the Battle Bible. If it's not, it's more unique and niche and you can... Play that as you will. If you've got journals at home and you want to use it, go for it. Some of the everyone knows. But this is like if you want to play with people who don't know anything about it and if everyone's on the same page, this is where you go. It's a bit yeah. random sometimes if you rocked up and you go, I'm playing Battle Bible, but I've got this journal from uh, March 1998 and it's got this one rule. <laughs> <laughs> it allows me to jam a vortex up your butt. It's like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> enticing, doesn't it? Okay, so uh, obviously you're a veteran, Kent, and you've actually got your own Facebook group. That's the Road Trader one, isn't it? For Facebook. Oh uh, yeah, I created Road Trader. Um, 40k. I think it's 40k Road Trader. That's one of mine. I've had six. I don't know. I've been in this game, this thing for so long. I just started going off randomly, creating groups. Um, yeah. So the Road Trader one is mine. Um, that's a bit of a mix of Road Trader and second ed because they do cross over quite a lot uh mm. rogue trader for those that don't know was the precursor to second ed 40k that's why it's called second ed because the first edition was rogue trader um mm. 
it wasn't a very complete game. It wasn't until really towards the end of Rogue Trader that it started getting a like a proper war game. Before that, it was more of a role play game that you could use miniatures with and you can be very flex with it. And then they're so old, the miniatures that they're kind of the fugly that only a mother could love type scenario. Like you're either really into them or you're not and you can't yeah. make them work. Yeah. Uh, I love them because I've got a lot of them and they're worth a fortune each now. So, you know, congratulations if you've got some. Um, but, yeah, so that's my my page. On that page as well, on the Rogue Trader one, I'm not sure they've got it on the uh, 40K second, but there used to be a army builder called Army – what was it called? Army Builder was the actual yeah. Yeah. software program. So that's no doesn't exist anymore, but you can still get the Army Builder from that – Facebook group and it's actually got the hack in it so you can actually load up all your second ed stuff and build army lists out of it. All right. Okay. All right. Awesome. So instead of using the old pen and paper and all that sort of stuff, you can actually build your lists as per normal and it's all in there as well. So that's all on the road trade. I'll find, I'll find the link for you and send it to you. Um, you can post it up. But, yeah, so when, when I ran tournaments, that, that's how I did it. So then everyone was writing. I wasn't get, receiving, you know, somebody's dodgy excel spreadsheet or somebody's handwritten army list where i had to work everything out so i'd make yeah. him do that because it even works out the percentages so you know for your character percentages and your troops of percentage all that yeah i think carnifex sent me one of those i think it's from another i think it's uh battle, I remember, battle scribe battle scribe does it too. i think battle scribe's doing it as well now i'm not sure how yeah, yeah. how good it is compared to the old one but anything will do as long as everyone's using the same one it's fine it's pretty. It's pretty accurate. I've checked it against the codexes and stuff. It's it's pretty yeah. good. I I haven't noticed. Uh, I think I've noticed one little error in there so far for me using it. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, cool. Yeah, battle scribes free as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good because we, we all make mistakes. I do anyway when I'm writing it by hand. <laughs> Always do. I write. I write the wrong bloody. Some stat call that there. cheating, Josh. No, no, no. I do it. I do it like a battle to me, not to my opponents. It's like I'm screwing myself. You know, I do that really well. Uh, Stranglers Wood Hobby. <laughs> Afternoon, guys. Checking in from three-ish hours away from Kent. There you go, mate. Nice to see you here. You yeah, mate. but yeah, I often make mistakes with pen and paper. So having that sort of a, a nice modern digital application to do all that sort of stuff with is really helpful. Um, also, that battle scribe. Uh, also has a lot of it has like a sheet with all the rules on there as well. It does yeah. at the so back, the back end, end of it does up, just because all that stuff I get to forget, you know, and that that way I've got a uh, I can consciously see okay that does that that a special rule for this, you know, uh, so that's really hand handy. But again, it's like a it's like a non funded kind of app. It's not something you buy. It's something that someone's doing out of their own free time. So yeah, anything anything like you that. You don't get mad at it. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, they're doing it out of their own. I see, comment, I see comments on like uh, on a lot of Facebook group pages, and people start getting cranky at army builders, and they're like, "This doesn't have this, and doesn't do this, and it miscalculates it all the time." You're like, "Dude, he's doing it for free. Work yeah. it out. Sort it out. Ah, yeah. he's up." <laughs> yeah, it's it's a stupid thing to use on your phone. I can't use it on my phone. I just it just uh, I think on a PC it must, must be a lot better to use. I, think. Yeah. I, I will say yeah. one thing about Battlescribe. It's a little bit of a learning curve to set it up. Um, so don't get frustrated setting it up. Like once you, once you figure it out, you figure it out. Yeah. It, but like it, I'll just give a warning out there that I got a little <laughs> frustrated the first time I was trying to set it up, but it, it, it works great. Like you can load up multiple games on there. It's pretty accurate. Uh, I haven't, again, I haven't found many issues with it. Uh, I really do love that it has all the special rules and stuff on there, uh, which is really great. I use it for all the game systems I play. Yeah, it's right. it's fantastic, but it does yeah. take a little bit of a learning curve. The set does, yeah. All right, so now we talked about the rules and how to get back into it. How about people finding miniatures and that kind of thing? What kind of suggestions would you have about people who want to get the genuine article miniatures, the old metal ones? Uh, Cody, what do you reckon, mate? Well, there. So you can go after the old stuff. Um, now, I do not recommend eBay. eBay. No. You, you can still find a good deal on there occasionally uh, and keep your eyes peeled on there. Nothing wrong with looking because occasionally, occasionally you'll find something on there, but the bet, the best way to go is usually try to find trade groups on Facebook, try to hook up with people like on the crown of command 
right? Like these these guys are going to help you like wheel and deal and find find you deals. Another good source is if you go to uh, conventions, actually. Um, going to conventions. Now, I understand that people, it, like here in the U.S., we're, we're pretty spoiled on conventions and people in other countries are not so much. It depends where you live. But I've had really good luck here in the U.S. going to conventions. And a lot of times they have these flea markets. So don't go yeah. to the resellers. Don't go to the resellers because they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have it priced eBay prices. Go into the hall in the back hall where the guy's just setting up his shit to fire sell, and uh, dig through all that crap, and you you might luck out. I've I've found some really crazy deals uh, going to those flea market sales at the conventions. So that that would be my other suggestion. Uh, another thing I would say is just look look at like. Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and stuff. I, I occasionally, very rare, I have found like some deals like that. I've even found stuff at garage sales. Believe it or not, you know, occasionally. So you just never, you never know. Just, just keep your eye out wherever you go. And if you're really determined, the thing I would say is just be patient. Yeah. Don't settle. Get what you want, but just be patient. Don't, don't just you know spend too much money. Don't spend more money than you have to. Right. Yeah. And if you have to collect just a few models at a time, fine, just do it. That like, just get a few models, paint them up, you know, and then you'll find a few more models, paint those up, you know, and just take your time with it. It's a hobby, right? Um, and I, th I think that's kind of part of the enjoyment of the nostalgic war gaming hobby is like hunting that stuff down. It's like collecting, like I collect records and comics and stuff. It's kind of the same thing, right? Like it's, it's part of the fun is kind of the hunt of finding that stuff. Mm. Um, but I, I think the best resource is hooking up with other people. So, you know, go to the Crown of Command's a good one. There's other discords and Facebook groups and all that stuff. Get to know those guys, connect with people. They'll hook you up, right? Like, just, just ask around and they'll hook you up. Yep, sure. uh, very good advice, uh, Cody. How about you, Kent? Any more words of advice there from the Battle Bunker? Yeah, even like um, family and friends, you know, like... Mm -hmm. You don't you don't think about it, but in your social interactions, when people find out you play, I call it pew pews. If I go play pew pews, people go, "What are you doing? I'm going to go play pew pews for the weekend." They go, "What are you talking about?" So, oh, toy soldiers. Oh, I've got a cousin's friend or a kid who's had that, and there's a box sitting in the attic, and do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, sure, bring it in. I'll I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> Some of my best deals come up from that. Oh, like, yeah. just, You're straight on eBay. Yeah. Just, no, I don't. I. Will not do. I don't that. Sorry, mate. That was a horrible incident. I'll sell, I'll sell my stuff there and I'll do it by auction. But so, rant time. The people on eBay have artificially inflated the price of stuff so oh, badly, absolutely. absolutely, to the point where it's not even reasonable. It's not even unless you're talking to other people who know. Like I'm on another Facebook group. I think it's called. Um, old hammer evaluations where people yeah. post up things and we give them a, a rough estimate of valuation and you you give them a value for something they go but that's not what they had on ebay and you're like no but that's all we're willing to pay for it like yeah and normally yeah. they're willing willing to pay for second ed miniatures roughly is retail plus about 20 percent from back in the day depending on the condition of it um some models are worth more than others but not very many are mm. you know what i mean like the the unless it's in a pristine box and you're looking at pristine stuff then you're looking at retail plus 50%, retail plus 80, unless it's a super duper rare, weird thing like a Gorka Morka boss that was only around for like five minutes before it disappeared. You know what I mean? Or like the um, miniatures that come to my head, uh, the Legion of the Dam Sergeant. Oh yeah. You know, one of the one of the you know, the holy grails of miniatures is a Legion of the Dam Sergeant. You can and like Cody said, it's like if you set your mind to it you set the price you're willing to pay for it then forget about it that's what i do i forget about it. i'll go whatever i'll just i'll if it comes up it comes up so i had a thing where i was collecting dragon ogres for fantasy battle now if anyone knows of a dragon ogre it's a massive lead model back in the day it was 49 dollars for one that's for one bloody dragon ogre in australia it was 49 bucks it was 50 bucks for one dragon ogre I set my mind to it. All right, I'm going to collect some dragon ogres. I needed some dragon ogres for whatever reason that I had in my head. And over a period of about four years, I've managed to collect over 25 of them in various bundled deals and bits and bobs. And people just, it just comes, it's like the secret. 
All right, you put your intentions out in the world and they come to you. It's like a mantra. Say it one dragon. You just got to put it out there. Yeah. And it just comes to you. Like I was missing. Oh, that's actually a funny story. So thanks to Texas, mm -hmm. I um, was missing the back banner pole of Carl Franz for Warhammer. Yeah. Right. A random piece of kit. Went on to bloody everywhere, searched around, did everything. People were wanting like $50, $60 type sort of thing for one part of a model. Yeah. Some random dude, I just posted up in a Facebook and said, I'm looking for this bit. I know I'm willing to pay, you know, I'm willing to pay 20, 30 bucks for it. I said, look, I'm willing to pay for it, whatever. Dude just sent me the whole fucking Carl France and said, wow. have it. As long as you paint it, do it. And I went, it cost him $60 to ship it to Australia. This is in the middle of COVID. Yeah. And then he sent me a sticker and he goes, dude, just remember Texas is great. I went, okay. Love it now. <laughs> that's that's another thing that I would say is that is part of like the old school wargaming ethic, right? Is yeah. to, to get yeah. back to get back and 100%. like yeah, and I, I do it all the time, right? Like if yeah, I have same. some models, yeah, if I got some models hanging around, I'm not using them, and somebody wants to get into the hobby and you want this army, here you go, man. Like, we'll make a trade or something, whatever. I don't, yeah. I don't care. I got my fun out of it, you get your fun out of it, like and then oh, I think the, that's somebody, I'm and, and, you know, bags of shame. They can have yeah. a part of my bag of shame. I don't care. Just take yeah, it. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm all about it. Like, I'll just give stuff away or just make like a reasonable trade or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I, I, you know, and I think that's an important thing that us old school gamers realize, but a lot of the new school guys need to realize is, you know, uh, that's that's part of the that's part of like just the old school ethic of war gaming is just giving back to people and get. get yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, yeah, keep it up, and God bless Texas. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah, God bless Texas, man. <laughs> I love you, Texas. I want to, oh, I'd love to go <laughs> those parts, parts of America, actually. They're, they're more interesting to me than the sort of northern areas or Midwest areas of uh, America, to be honest. Yeah. I don't think my stomach would handle Texas, but, yeah. Oh, the food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Texas cooking. Uh, it's going to be said it's Louisiana. But oh geez. I think I just put on four kilos thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, that's a really important point that Cody made. And I, I've also been uh, the recipient of some amazing, generously people out there in the community. Um, because obviously, obviously the Chronic Command is a big part of that, but obviously, you know, just once they know you're in that circle of or group of people on Facebook, they know you're genuine in it, they know that you're not gonna just you know flog off what they sell you for cheap for for a profit. They know that you're in the hobby for the right reasons and all that kind of thing. And once you make those connections within with people in the hobby, you, it's it's like a, it's like you say, it's like, you know, you, you get a good deal, you give a good deal, you know, and it sort of reciprocates that way. And yeah, yeah thanks, thanks to the amazing people in the Corona Command, especially. Uh, we do that a lot through our Discord. You know, people sell it for a reasonable price, they get stuff for a reasonable price. Sci-fi sent me a um, very kindly sent me one part of the hot splat gun for Rogue Trader. I had the I had the crew, yeah. I had the I had the actual chassis, the um the uh, sort of the, the plate on the front, but I just didn't it just didn't come with any guns. So he very kindly sent me one of those because he watched one of my videos on YouTube and said, Oh, you know, yeah, I've got I found this in my bits box here, mate. You you just take it, you know, so you can so I can actually complete one, which is awesome. So thanks for that sci-fi. That's great. So I got one hot splat gun from Rogue Trader. So we all help each other, you know. We do that, uh, you know. I help people out if I can, if I've got some something they need, and, they, and I would rather them have it, them paint it, them play with us, than it just sitting here in a box for God knows how many years and maybe never get touched or whatever, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. There's um, one golden rule though. If I give you something and then I find it on fucking Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> or eBay, you are fucking dead to me. You are, cut, you are gone. You are a load of trash. Yeah. Delete me yeah. from your friend group. I don't. I don't want to talk to you ever again. I've, I've seen had it happen too. Oh, I've had it happen to me multiple times. Yeah. Like you know, I, I give somebody a good deal on something, and then like they they flip it like in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, what the fuck, dude? Like, <laughs> like um, I'm hunting some stuff for my son. Can anyone help me out? Yeah, here's some stuff. Yeah. And then you see it on fucking marketplace. It's like no, dude. Don't even no. Yeah. No. So there you no, go, young Thomas. Don't, 
Yeah. Your dick. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's a good segue there, actually, Ken. So we're going to talk about don't be a dick because this is a system you've created with your guys there in Newcastle, part of Newcastle Legions. Uh, yeah. For organized play of second edition 40K, yeah? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So... For those that have played a lot of, and you know, if you go into the 40k second edition Facebook group page, you'll see a lot of even like Josh's battle reports and things like that. You do a 2,000 point game. There's certain hard restrictions within the rules of second edition that actually go against the style of play they actually intended for you to play with. And what I mean by that is 40k second ed is a really a drill down detailed skirmish game. It's not a grandioso game of epic proportions. Unfortunately, that's where it went. Yeah. So starting from the first army book, which I think was Eldar, which, oh no, Space Wars was the first book, yeah. then Eldar, and then we started going through. There was no balancing. There's no, you know, the game testing was just didn't exist, all right? So as you progress through, and then towards the end of the army book scheduling, they got to the point where they're like, fuck, people have got to too many models and it's just getting out of hand. But they didn't care. It's just like, just sell more models, just sell more models. That was the creative, you know, genius behind corporate GW back in those days. And still is today, really, let's be honest. But DBay came about from playing second ed at the highest level. So one of my good friends, Dazzler, he actually won Moab. I Mo, know oh he won CanCon. So CanCon in Australia is is the Adepticon of America. It's the biggest thing that we have. Um, and in 1995, he won it with Harlequins. And this is a tournament of over nearly 100 players. Um, he was <laughs> dropping blind grenades on people. He was creating blind screens, <laughs> flipping over single solitaire, vortexing people, just totaling armies individually, and. Awesome for Dario, or so awesome for Dazzler, not so awesome for anyone playing against him, not so awesome for <laughs> pretty much anybody who wasn't using those sort of armies. Yeah. Like, there's only, like, it, by the time we got to the pinnacle of second edition, there was only a three or four tournament armies you could play that were actually any good that could do any damage. Yeah. Everyone else sucked. Like, Space Marines as a whole sucked. Their armor save wasn't good enough. They died in chaff. Like, you have to be very creative with Space Marines to actually be able to make them stand up to the top Eldar players, to the top Tyranid players, to the top... What was the other big armies that were really good at the time? Chaos was really good at the time. Um, and then if the tournament organisers allowed special characters, which were kind of outlawed and banned 90% of the time, it just blew the games wide open because there were certain characters that were just too far over the top. And if you put no restrictions on it, you know, and this comes back to a big problem in when I discuss these things because it gets lost in translation a lot in Facebook. Um, when they re read things that I say, they don't see the places where I come from and how much I've actually played this game and how I the details of where D-Bag comes from and seeing the dejection and the, the look of loss on somebody's face as a solitaire runs through an entire army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cody. Because they do. Or, oh, or a Banshee well. Exarch with, with um, a Banshee Exarch with uh, Power Fist and uh, something else with some Swooping Hawk Wings just <laughs> ransack your Space Marine Lord you spend 15 hours painting who just gets totaled in five seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, these are the sort of things that um awesome if you're into that if that's what you're wanting to do if you want to go down the the, the hedonistic levels of just play it like it was meant to they didn't even know what they meant to play it as they had no fucking idea they were just trying to sell miniatures for fuck's sake all right so don't stand on this pedestal of saying oh they root these rules because that's what they were trying to they didn't know what the fuck they were doing like those were the matt ward books they had no fucking idea what they were doing they were uh, just selling miniatures, and each each book was more powerful than the last. It's mm. it is what it is. Like I don't want a historical game where it's everyone sort of kind of balanced and even. Like I actually do appreciate Power Creep. I find it very interesting and fun dynamic of these sort of games. Where the D bad stuff comes into is it started slowly. So it starts off with even when you read the Battle Bible, it'll start off with a virus strategy the virus bomb strategy card and when you read the when you read the battle bible 
it'll actually it'll say no this strategy has been discontinued and we don't recommend you use it yeah yeah don't fucking use it all right so that's the first <laughs> part of be bad it's like some things just don't work like yeah. they're just you know some things are just too powerful then we sort of started going all right so if we're not using i think there's two strategy cards we don't ever use which is the virus and the uh, vortex i think it's was it, which one is it there's virus outbreak that's definitely a banned uh strategy card the other one i don't know don't know the other, uh, the other one was there's this two there's two i always ban it's not um it'll come to me um so it starts off with that so you just take out those things then you start looking at the power imbalance of certain heroes because second ed becomes a hero based game very quickly is my hero enough to take out the other heroes? Can I get my hero across the board quick enough to take out the other heroes? Then you have the problem with vortex grenades. All right, so vortex grenades is an instant death mm. unless you've got a vortex detonator. Then mm. you're talking about um, are you having hidden lists? Because for a vortex detonator to work, you have to have a hidden list because yeah. otherwise there's no point in doing it. So in tournament settings, majority of the time it's not hidden list you're actually explaining people what you've got in your armies before you play mm -hmm. so we sort of go well we'll take out vortex grenades we'll take out this we'll take out that anyway so during a lot of this process me personally running so many demo games of 40k and then stage demo games in games workshop so a stage demo game is so you've run a kid through 15 basic games of the box set all right that cody's got in his back there like you know you've got you, you got your what is it 20 got 20 gretchen or 40 gretchen two squads of 20 you got your uh 20 orcs and you got your dreadnought in a paper card and then you've got your 10 marines and you know then you step it up and you go okay so you can have another squad of marines now you can have another little bit of this and you can kind of like what combat control combat patrol is now for 40k 10th edition yeah. So in the shops, we were introducing this to the kids. So in the shops that I used to run, I would try to introduce the kid into 40K through the basic game. Then I'd step it up with a little bit more. Then I'd step it up and just keep building them into more and more. So then they'd go off and they'd buy a you know, box set of Marines and they'd buy themselves a hero or they'd buy themselves a chaplain. And then we'll go, okay, cool. So we'll just have a hero-based game with our generals because when you start adding generals, shit gets a bit weird. And then we'd go, okay, so I'm going to teach you how to make an army list. So here's a 500-point army list. Here's a, you know, the, the origins of a slow grow started here. This is where we started doing, this is a slow grow of an army. And then I'd take a kid aside and go, here's your 2,000-point army, but we'll break it down to 500 chunks, paint it up, bring it in store, and then we'll play it. It was at this stage that I noticed that around the 1,000, and we would break certain rules in this. So to make your 500, to make your 1,000 points work, you wouldn't be taking, you know, vortex grenades because they're 50 points. Like they're just too expensive. You wouldn't be taking a general character. You'd only be taking a hero character at level two. You wouldn't be taking a psyker necessarily because you don't want to introduce psyking just yet because you didn't want to sell them a dark millennium box set because they've only got the basic box set. So things like this sort of started happening. And then when I came back to second edition a lot later and I met up with Daz and we started working these sort of things out, we found that the sweet spot was about 1,500 points. Yeah. It was hero level characters, which is a two wound character. Uh, that, and then we went right. So then we play that without any war gear. What does that look like? So we'd have a few games without any war gear, any extra stuff. And funny things we noticed is that troops became really powerful again. A yeah. squad of marines was a scary thing. A squad of aspect warriors, or even guardians with a with a weapon platform, was actually a thing now because it could take out parts of the battlefield and mm. went oh shit second ed actually has a lot of strategy strategic depth to it then we go okay so if at 1500 points you can actually get quite a lot of troops and things like that so what we did was we go all right so using the same structure that is normally built into second ed 40k army list building which is what uh 50 characters 50 basic troops 25 percent um what is it support support yeah. heavy yeah. support um we went okay so we make it 25 percent for heroes because we want to limit the amount of heroes on the battlefield because we want to make it focused on troops 
50% of troops and then 25% on support. And then we said, all right, how about we do this? We go, you get 50 points of upgrades across the entire army. Mm. So whether that's vehicle cards, whether that's your war gear cards, whether it's your Exarch powers, whether it's your biomorphs for Tyranids and things like that, you only get 50 points worth as a total mm. rule. So you're keeping the game really small, but yeah. you're also keeping the game really tactical. Yeah. Now, once you do all this and you've, you know, we've created that and we've got that I've, and I've sent this off and, you know, people playing this out, um, psych has become a thing. It's like, all right, so you have to deal with psychers. So psychers can only be level two. All right. Now, if you go into Dark Millennium, there's actually a way to work all this out. It's like 25 points per level. Okay. All right. And even in some of the army builders, they actually have this actually built into it. And so when you buy your Marine Hero, you can just upgrade him 25 points per level. Where the only armies that break these kind of rules are like Tyranids, Gene Stealer Colts. They're about it, really. Like oh. everyone else can work within these rules quite easily. Yeah. Where I get a lot of pushback from 40K second ed players is through the rules say that you have to have a general in your army and a hero is not a general. Right. Why? <laughs> like, yeah, fucking this game again, their rules were shit when they wrote them. <laughs> it's like they wrote it for when they wrote it and it didn't equate until you've got to like 10 army books and it's it's gone crazy anyway. If you want to do that, go the other way. This is how we're gonna play it. We're gonna play it tight, we're gonna play it skirmish, and we're gonna play it good. Um then we've got once you've got all this out, we go, all right, WYSIWYG. So everything you say, everything you want on the model has to be on the model type scenario. Yeah. Painted armies, all right, that's all good. Um, I think with Tyranids, we went that they have no biomorphs at all because they just go well out of the proportion of things. They have to have a Hive Tyrant, which does boost you out of the hero level sort of character because they don't actually have a hero character to run in their army. Um, but if you take out the biomorphs, you take out their psychic levels, or you can give them two psychic levels at 50 points, all right, they're actually quite killable. It's a, a crack missile is going to take him out, all right? Your Devastator squad that you spent 15 hours painting, 20, you know, some people would have spent 30 hours painting it, might actually do some damage without dying in the first instant. <laughs> now, on top of all that, you've got... Once we did all this, and we had played a few games of that, and we, we mucked around with it a bit, and this is where D-Bad came into play. So with the missions and the way the missions work, you can actually game, even a system that's taken everything out, you can still game it. You can still be a gamey fucker. You can take Tyranids, and then you can make all your... You can take Tyranids and Eldar. They're the two ones that come to my head. Oh, and Guard. They're the three, three armies that can really game this system is that you can take units and make sure they don't go over the threshold for mission objectives. Mm. So you can go MSU, you can go multiple small units, and you can create an army that gives your opponent no victory points. Don't be a dick. <laughs> 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 and that's it's that simple. It's like yeah. when we ran our first D-Bad uh, event, um, and I put this out there. I said, just don't be a dick. Like, don't. And I, I, I try to keep telling people, like, just play an army that you'd want to play against and you'll be fine. Mm. And then you still have people. And I said, look, all right, for the first first one, we're going to make sure you submit your list and we'll read them. And just to make sure everyone's, you know, on the same, you know, because you don't want to be turning up the knife with the gunfight side of scenario where you've created this most beautiful, fluffy, tactical marine army like the blood angel army that you had the other day where it's just got a tactical squad it's got a rhino it's got a this it's got one of everything it looks beautiful but synergetically wise it's probably the worst army you could possibly make but you don't want that up against a tyranid army that is just got nothing but homogens and is going to charge you in the second turn and wipe you out yeah. that's just not fun for anyone even this even when we did the first tournament Someone submitted, and this guy knows who he is. And if you're listening to this, you know who you are. And you got called out. <laughs> he's one of my oldest friends. And he's just, okay. dude, what the fuck are you doing? He submits a theory list that's kept all his units under 100 points. Uh, and I'm like, I said, no, you're going to have to group all your little Termigate and your Homigate units. You've got like six of each. 
group them together into three units of three. And he goes, no, I don't want to play it now. <laughs> you, should, you should have a stamp. You just like stamp list, don't be a D-bat. That's it. Bang. Okay. And then we had another guy who, who wanted to put, run a – what did he want to do? He wanted to run a um, Imperial Guard army just full of fucking basilisks. Oh, wow. I'm like, no one wants to play that, dude. What are you fucking doing? Yeah. All right, don't be a fucking dick. <laughs> and that's how it all came about. That's where don't be a dick comes Judgment from. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's pulling your head in from being a teenage kid playing on your floor with your mates and getting into arguments for 15 hours over throwing grenades onto a bridge, all right, oh, yeah. to being a grown adult playing yeah. man dollies on the weekend and enjoying your time while you're drinking beer. Mm. All right, so that's where D bag comes from. Um, you got any questions? There's, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, right now. I don't know, I don't know how, like, because every time I posted this up anywhere, I get so much grief from people no saying, way. You're not playing the rules properly, you're not doing this, and you can't, you can't, uh, what is it, you can't. Um, comp a system like you never comp a system, you just got to play it as it is. That's a very 40k mentality. You have right. to play the system as it is, and that's normally coming from the guy who just got the army book that is so fucking good that it destroys everyone anyway. And that's their idea of a good time. And if that's their idea of a good time, open up Pornhub and destroy yourself. Like, come on, <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't need that here on the war gaming table. I came here to a joint interaction. If you're not going to interact well with me, you can piss off. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's D bag. Oh, that's wonderful. I love it. So we've got Old Wolf and A. <laughs> Fury, hurrah, glad to jump in here. I'm glad you're here, mate. That's great. And Vaughn, that was awesome to hear the rant from the Fury. And is there any points limit on D bag games? I may have missed you. Yeah, saying you can you can start D bag from as low as 500 points. That's why it's such a good little system because you you can start with a hero. You can start with a sergeant. We used to play it in GW with a sergeant. Yeah. All right, so a sergeant of marines or a hero, like whatever your champion is or a champion level character, they can run your army. Yeah. If you want to get fluff with me, boys, a marine sergeant is a hundred years old and been in battle for since his entire inception. God damn, he can run a battlefield by himself if he wanted to. Yeah. Where do you think they get their bloody field marshals from? From sergeants. You have to go through all the ranks. So come on, yeah. So you can run it from a champion level. So five hundred points, champion level. Which you know for Marines might be, and then you, oh no, you're gonna have to break some rules. You take a five man squad of Marines instead of a ten man squad of Marines. Okay, yeah. fucking mind blowing. All right, <laughs> just be flexible. But the beauty of second end, this is why I do love it. When you get Dark Millennium and you go through it, when you go through the Battle Bible, there is points for everything because yeah. it comes from Rogue Trader. And they haven't really ever changed the point system from Rogue Trader to Second Ed. Mm. All the points are built in. So you can build out things very easily and very susceptibly. Like it's not that hard. All right. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Is there an official document where people can actually go and see, like to read through the DBAD rules at all? Yeah. Yeah. I sent, I sent one to you. I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm hopeless at this, mate. Sorry. I, yeah, I, yeah, no, it won't turn. I did change it to seek and destroy, but after talking about this, we'll just call it D bad from now on. I think it sounds sounds better. But now you understand my rant. So uh, okay, that's why I didn't I didn't realize what it was. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that's a seek and destroy. Now more astute players out there will find a lot of holes and bits and bobs in that that they were probably trying to exploit. So I'll just refer back to don't be a dick. It's a default. It's an essence. It's an essence. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. It's it's like when you're playing historicals, you just sort of you got to feel it out, guys. Like it's just you know, it, it's a way of being. Wow. You know, if you, you want to you want to play a game with you're going to spend two hours with somebody, another grown man. Normally, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it's going to be a man. You want to enjoy that experience, and that's through the immersion of the hobby, where you've both got nicely painted armies. You got your goblin green bases or that heretic that has his own painted bases. You got great terrain. You're all playing the same rules. You're playing a small, tight skirmish game where one one foul shot of a rocket launcher might take out your one leader. All right. And you want to make the game fun and come down to the last minute. So those mission cards that come with the game and come with Dark Millennium that are built into the Battle Bible, they're awesome. 
if you're playing it with the right spirit. Actually, that can actually work. They, I, I still use them in Heresy. I still use them in modern 40K. Like, they're actually really well thought out and planned out missions. So go for it. Have fun with it. Like, can I make one request? Yeah. Can I make one request, please? Don't change the name, mate. Don't change it. No, D-Bad. you can call D Bad. D Bad's fine. The Seek and Destroy hasn't got the same flavour. Hasn't got the same. Hasn't got the flavour. You want the flavour. You want the flavour. <laughs> so I think. I think that's beautiful. I think that's just you know encapsulates encapsulates everything you want to say. So yeah. sideways says tweak the rules to be a dig free zone. Yeah, we definitely want to see yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much. It, it's and you're not even tweaking the rules to be honest. You're mm. just bending bending army list creation because you're not <laughs> you're not actually breaking anything. Breaking it would be saying that I can now throw a grenade 15 times further than my normal strength. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's breaking the rules. You know, yeah. this isn't breaking the rules. This is changing army army composition. And it, because you're taking out the hero, you've just eliminated 90% of the problems of second edition. Mm. Yeah. No, because some heroes sure. are just too much. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no – basically, there's no special characters either, no name characters. Nah, you can – I, I actually allow hero level special characters because they're actually a lot of flavor in them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. So, so someone like someone like for Blood Angels, like Corbulo, awesome little mid tier yeah. chaplain dude, <clears throat> freaking awesome miniature. Yeah, run that. Like um, when someone would submit a list to me and it had like it was a Blood Angel army with a Corbulo theme to it, it's like fuck yeah, I want to see that. That's awesome. You know, like yeah. Hero level characters go all nuts. Like as long as, as long as they've got so the definition of a hero level character normally <coughs> under most normal circumstances is a two wound character. Yeah. Sorry, man. So yeah. two wound character. Right. As long as it fits the two wound, wound character profile, then it should be okay for D bad. So Astro Zombie is fully with you about D bad way of life and sci fi is having the right attitude and having fun. Alcohol helps. Does. It does help, but it actually really affects my gameplay. I'm terrible when I drink. Yeah, I, I, I'm yeah, average I, when I don't, and I'm terrible when I drink. I don't really care. I don't really. I mean, I just play to have fun. But I think I, I really appreciate what you've done uh, with D-Band. I'll, I'm going to have to give it a look. Uh, we kind of have the same kind of thing when I play with the few people here that will play second edition with me. But it's kind of like a gentleman's agreement. Right. Yeah, we, it is. we don't even write it down. We, it's just like, okay, we're not taking vortex grenades. You know, we're not taking Jane's R. We're not, we're not yeah. doing that. Like, it's just an unspoken rule because, yeah. and I think that's kind of a unspoken rule amongst all war games, to be honest with you. Like, I don't think, you know, war gaming is, uh, especially when you get into like science fiction war gaming and stuff, it's not going to be balanced. I don't care what you do. You know, nah, if, if it is hard. balanced, it's not going to be very fun or flavorful, you know? Exactly. And one of the great things about second edition, one of the things I love about it is the flavor. It has so much flavor. It's just oozing and dripping with flavor and narrative, and it's just fun to play. And it's definitely not the, like, I explain this to everybody up front. I'm like, look, this is not, this is not like, if if you're coming to this, like a competitive atmosphere, which you can play tournaments, you know, whatever, you can definitely do that. But this is not the game for you. Okay. (laughs) Like this is. You know, you, you need to approach this in the right spirit, which I think is the right spirit for all war gaming. Um, you just need to approach it for fun. And yeah, don't be a dick, right? Um, I remember when, we, when, when I first got back into 40K, we we were pulling out all the stops, right? We had yeah. vortex grenades and like special characters and stuff. And it didn't take us but like one or two games to be like, all right, we need to like, not do that anymore. I so just, just, yeah, just yeah, calm just gonna, down, <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna tone this shit down. No, I, I won't lie. Every once in a while, it's like, all right, let's pull out all the stops this time. Yeah, you know, it's, it, and that could be fun, dude. You know, it could be a lot of fun to like be like, all right, we're doing we're doing it all. We're doing vortex grenades. We're pulling yeah. out the special characters, and we're just gonna lay it down and have a good time. Um, and, and I said this to my friend Jack the other day, and we were playing a game of second edition. I was playing my Harlequins, and I basically tabled him. Uh, oh, funny that. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I was just like, I was like, it's a good thing. It's a good thing we're friends and having a good time. He's like, yeah, man, this is a blast. You know, it, it didn't yeah, matter. Sure, he went home and cried in the shower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, exactly. But we're just having a good time. It didn't I'm having a great time, man. I'm having a great time. <laughs> it's great. Please give me some more. <laughs> 
we were just having a good time. And that, that's what it's all about, man. Just what you know, it's it's a it's definitely and it was designed. If you ask Andy Chambers, if you ask Rip Priestley, yeah. if you ask all those guys, they'll tell you, hey, we designed the game to be fun. You know, yeah, exactly in the rules, break the rules, do what you want. We yeah. do all the time, you know. So it, it I I I really I'm right there with you, Kent, as far as like people are like, oh, you can't, you know, the game was made to play the no. It's dude, it's huh. wild and wacky and unbalanced, and it does it, it yeah. does it. Yeah, there is like no there's no fucking balance here. There's there's a lot of contradictions in the rules. There's all kinds of crazy shit going on. Just have fun and do what you want, man. That's that's what it was yeah. designed to do. If you want to get real with it, you know. One of the reasons that D-Bad was I did one of the whole tournaments, and so I ran. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I sorry I missed it. I, I sort of skipped in the introduction. I set up a, a gaming club here in my hometown, Newcastle, called Newcastle Legions. Yeah. And in that, there's a lot of old players that I used to play with in the games workshop days. And so, and then with Daz, who was a very high level um, second at 40k player, we wanted to grab some of those people and bring them back into the game. But at the same time, we wanted to bring that feeling back of D Bad. And so I've run, I think I've run three, maybe four of these tournaments. I do them every second year because you play it too much and, you you know, it is what it is. We're all time poor. And I have people coming all from everywhere to play this. Um, and then when you actually play the games, they go for less than two hours. They're so strategically good. I, I, I cannot stress to you enough. If both players come in with the right attitude, with the right armies. So the armies that I've played in D-Bad has been my Space Wolves my Chaos Marines, and my uh, Gene Stiller Cult. Yeah. Um, my Space Marines, they a typical... De- so I'll give you an idea, a typical D-Bad Space Marine army will have... So there's there's certain heroes that will always be a must-stay, right? So, for example, in a Space Marine army, it'll either be a second-level a second level librarian because you just need that librarian power. It'll either that or a hero with a jump pack or a chaplain with a jump pack because you need to get across the field and just bash something. Yeah, You'll have typically a squad of Marines uh, with a Rhino, so you can get them across the field for a lot of the missions. You'll have fire support, so you'll either take a tank or you'll take a land speeder. I've always preferred land speeders over, over everything else because you've got a really good fire base that can move quickly. And I always prefer a tank over a Devastator squad because once you get the land speeder and the tank together, you've got yourself a good mix and a Dreadnought. And this is the sort of army that you're looking at. Like, it's a very basic sort of themed army, but it can do the damage if it's used right. Yeah. Um, and then my Chaos Marines look completely different. So I'd have a second level Sorcerer, of course, who's summoning, I paid for Demonettes to bring up Demonettes. I've got a Dreadnought coming through the middle. I've got Noise Marines that are just, you know, playing down some Smackdown. I've got a Rhino in there. Uh, if anyone's ever seen my Rhino, it's got the uh, Bluetooth speaker built into it so I can play death metal as I roll it through. Right. All right. So <laughs> you just got to have you know, a bit of fun with it. Yeah. And then the army, I, I did the best. And the funny thing with that Chaos Marine army is I played uh, – he'll come to me. I played this guy's Eldar army, and for the first three turns, I was just rolling him. I was just taking over everything. Everything was going great, and then the battery in my Bluetooth died, and then the old eye just destroyed me. <laughs> <laughs> so that the entire awesome. time, I'm just pumping this music out, going, "Yeah, come on, he's my Sinesh. and then boom! Oh shit, Elda woke up. <laughs> yeah, once you yeah. kill the music, once you kill the music, <laughs> kill the music. Like um, Steve yeah. Quinn, that's Quinny, Quinny's oh, army. Okay, and then the next, the next, the next year, I took Gene Stiller Colt, yeah. and uh, we, he had his orc army. He's got a beautiful second head orc army. And we had one of the most crazy games of just orcs just pumping me with their long range shooting and yeah. me trying to do the biggest outflank with gene seals you've ever seen, going up over buildings, coming around, trying to get into there within the four turn sort of limit that you have for the missions. Mm. So um, and I think going back through my head, like the people who won the tournaments. Um, so when you submit, so it comes down to also how you're doing it. I think we actually had a a rating system as well. So you get points for um, your fully painted army and you get points for um, the composition of your army. And those mm. points would add to your battle total. So mm. every game, you'd add that to your battle total. So if you took a really soft army, 
you'd get full points, full comp points, and then that would add to your total. If you took a mid-tier, so to give you an example, my Genius of the Cult would definitely be a mid-tier to a high-tier sort of army, just the way I built it, because I was being a bit of a cheesy cunt and I wanted to actually be annoying. Um, <laughs> so I did take... You've always got to take soft options, right? I didn't take 40 gene yeah. stills, for example. I took 10. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? So um, that would have got comped a bit harder. So it would have maybe only got two out of five points, where someone like Gibbs uh, Quinny's Orcs would have got full five because it was the most beautiful one of every clan sort of army that had a bit of everything going on in it. And it was really awesome. Um, so you do that as well. And then you have like, this one guy took a guard army and, you know, you have Commissar last stands, like standing on top of a bloody hill, just beating things off. And he's only got a sword and a lad's pistol. You know what I mean? Like he's got nothing else, but he's still surviving. And he's, you know, doing what he's got to do to get the job done and rallying the troops. And you get those hidden gem moments that we all love talking about in these games all the time, because yeah, there's yeah. nothing super duper happening. That's outrageous to give you an idea. Like with the, so I'm ranting a bit. I never knew how good grenades were for the entire lifespan of second edition until I played Daz's Harlequins, who did the full blinds, the you know, oh, the yeah. blind blanket. So for those that don't know, all Harlequins get blind grenades. Blind grenades, you can't see through them. And what they would do is they throw out to get two or three troops of Harlequins is what five guys in a troop, three to five, three to seven in a troop, or something it's, ridiculous it's, like that. It's minimal ten. Per minimal the, ten is it? Yeah, it's minimal ten oh, for per the troop. The yeah. Codex. but I don't but play. Then talk, yeah, so then you, you're looking at ten blind grenades that are just it's like a massive line of no see through. But then you move your Harlequins into the middle of them, and then you charge out the next turn. All right. That tactic had been destroying me for years until I actually read the rules. It's a funny thing when you read rules. So I just roll up my 10 tactical Marines who are about to get murdered by the troop of Harlequins and just threw 10 frag grenades into the blind spot. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shit happens. Can 10 frag that? grenades actually. Yeah. Yes. Can you you can actually okay. I, I think me, I think this came up with Paul as well, like picking a point on the on the spot on the ground and throwing something at it. I don't know. Yeah, you don't have to have line of sight. Mm -hmm. It's just okay. random. It just scatters. It just scatters automatically. Yep. Right. The thing is, it's a two inch frag template. Harlequins only have a toughness of three. Yeah. A frag yeah. grenade's only toughness three. So I've yeah. got 10 frag grenades going through this entire troop that's been clumped up, ready to charge me. I take yeah. out 70% of them. I'm like, where's this been all my life? This is the greatest <laughs> thing I've ever done. Are you being a dick? No, I wasn't being the dick. The blind grenade <laughs> Harlequin player was being the dick. I was just fighting a way around it. But right, it's a joyous good. second edition. Like there's there's things that happen that you know I've been playing this thing for so long that I didn't even think yeah. that was a thing that I could yeah. do. And then you find it and you're like, oh my god, Mate. my nick was blowing. Yeah, it's a game Cody, that keeps on giving. Your your opponent Cody better not hear this, mate, because he's got the secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Missing I, all the time. I mean, in defense of the Harlequins, because yeah. I am a Harlequin in defense, player. You got no defense for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they they are. You have to. So you you they are squishy. You have to know what you're doing. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. You have to know what you're doing with them. And the, I, I discovered the blind grenade thing. Like it took me a few games to discover that. I was like, oh, this is the way is they the way. survive. Yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, but I don't go I, – I do use them, but I don't go crazy with it. Like yeah, I, you know, I, Under D-Bad, the Harlequins are not too bad because the biggest character they can get is a Harlequin troop commander. Like a, yeah. a, So that's the biggest guy they can get, and I think they can get a Psycho level two as well, a Warlock, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and they're not too bad. Like they're definitely squishy. They, they're tactically still pretty cool, but you, they do find themselves – yeah, there's no player has a defense self for held on that. There's not. Oh, yeah. They're, they're just well, they're ridiculous. <laughs> but to give you an idea, cool. like it comes down to the player. So in one of those D bad tournaments, I played an Eldar guy who had all the tricks. I think he he scored a very low sort of score for his army composition, mm -hmm. but he didn't know how to use warp spiders properly. Right. Yeah. And warp spiders take ten games before you get the hang of them. They're a horrible unit, like on the on the hands of a very good player. But somebody who doesn't really know how to use them properly, like they just die like anything else. Yeah, I think he left them out in the wrong spot. And I just rolled up my rhino full of um, uh, cultists that had flamers and just flamed them all. Yeah, they all died. 
You know what I mean? So, you know, Eldar, under D-Bad, Eldar are actually a really fun army to play, very, very, very tactical, very, very unique, because you can, you know, one Eldar army is the same. Um, I've seen people run them as just nothing but guardians. I've seen people run them as pirates. I've seen them run them as uh, just one aspect cult. I've seen them, you know, all the themey stuff you could possibly think of, you can yeah. do. Because your hero in that level would be a um, an exarch. Yeah, he would be the general of your army. Would be an exarch or a warlock. Now, under d you can have more than two characters or more than one character, but one of them has to be your general for the rules for the missions. Mm. Cool. All right. Okay. I think we've covered everything about the d system. So if people are, who are interested, uh, I'll have to put a link somewhere for you guys to access that d rule system. Is it on a website or anything like that at all, mate? Is it on the, the new No, I'll or? just I'll, – I'll send you the document and then you can post it up on the Crown of Command and people can just download it from there. And Let's I'll, just drive some traffic to you. Yeah, I'll post <laughs> this video up on the Wyoming Second Edition uh, Facebook group. Uh, yeah. And I'll, Hopefully, I can upload it in. I can upload that file if it's not in there already into their file section, and that way you could easy. It's an easy way to access that. Um, I have promoted it on there before, but I copped so much backlash from it, I just gave up on it. But mate. I think through communication and seeing my rants of where it comes, because it, it has people have to understand it comes from a place of love, yeah. and of course, experience, of course. It, it, like the nuance of Facebook doesn't like if you write into Facebook. Oh, I've been playing since like '92, dude, and I've had this. you seem like such a twat. All right, so <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I'm allowed to comp it because I played it heaps. All right, yeah, yeah, Shut of up. yeah. Okay, mate. <laughs> just a moment. Okay, so just, just I'm going to shout out to Stu from Sustained Fire event. It was held in Brisbane last year. Yeah, I was. I wanted to get up there, but I couldn't do it. Yeah, so it, it is still alive and kicking in Australia, which is great to see. And I know it's you know it's played in various parts of the world. Uh, even uh, my good friend uh, Jimmy um, uh, from the Old Old Lives, he's playing it in fifteen mil. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. printed through fifteen mil. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Really cool. Looks really looks really cute. Like the whole like the really small battlefields. He, he even made the little tiny little cactus plants. Oh, in 15 mil yeah, and no. all. They're brilliant. Nice. Uh, that's great. I mean, that's, you know, you can enjoy second edition in any way, form that you want to play it. Um, there's lots of resources out there. So, you know, don't feel restricted or restrained to think that, oh, well, it's, you know, it's past that point. I'll never get back into it. You can get back into it if you really want to. So, um, but look, guys, we've, we've, the streams are almost an hour and a half. I've got to feed my boy and take him to his friend's house so he can play Nintendo Switch to his heart's, heart's desire. So I'd like, to, I'd like to thank both of you, especially Kent Fury, all the way from Australia, mate, to come on to talk all about D-Bad with us and your love of second edition and your um, uh, your passion for it. And Cody as well, mate, all the way over in uh, Tennessee, my friend. Yeah. No, it was good meeting you, Kent, by the way. Uh, <laughs> nice meeting you too. And lastly, when I, get to, so when, I get, when I get to Japan again, I'll make sure we can have a battle report of D-Bad just to give it a bit of flow, a bit of yeah. feeling. And like I said, mate, your, your, wife, your wife and kids, if they come, you, they're more than welcome up here, okay? So, no, I'm going to ditch them. I'm coming back. Okay, so. right. <laughs> too much fun. <laughs> but uh, finally, to all the people, all the great people in our chat here at the moment who's been commenting, uh, Sci-Fi, Astro Zombie, uh, uh, Vol, Vol, sorry, not Vaughn, Vol, uh, Old World Fanatics, uh, who else did we have here? I think that was the main group of people that come to say hello, stranglers and hobbies. Str is it stranglers? Yeah, stranglers. I don't wear glasses on. But uh, thanks everybody for, for tuning in to check us out live. If you're looking at this, the the um, the you know the replay of it, hope you enjoy the conversation the guys have brought today about second edition 40k. And until next guy, next next time, guys, uh, take care of yourselves, enjoy your weekend, and uh, we'll catch you again next time. Peace. Peace.